Big polluters need to reduce emissions, but there are also things that each of us can help do, and using the power of nature is one of them. Last week, we announced that a re-elected Liberal government will plant two billion trees over the next decade. Just like the trees we planted today, they're going to pull carbon emissions out of the atmosphere to provide clean air, not just for us and our kids, but for our grandkids and their kids. As part of this commitment, we will invest $3 billion for natural climate solutions to conserve and restore everything from wetlands to agricultural land. Our plan will mean more jobs, in this case around 3,500 new positions, and less pollution. Because we know we can fight climate change and grow the economy. We have this country's first and only serious plan to fight climate change. And the Conservatives? Well, Andrew Scheer promised that the very first thing they would do is tear up that plan and cost Canadians money in the process. Conservative politicians have no plan to reduce emissions, no plan for jobs, and no plan for our future. You already know that. Here in Ontario, people have seen Doug Ford try to axe tree planting programs, putting seasonal jobs at risk and leaving tree growers in a lurch. Hardworking families shouldn't pay the price for his irresponsible choice, so we stepped in with $15 million to keep the program going. But this short-sighted decision by the Conservative government is just another example of how politicians who promise to be for the people turn around and cut services that families rely on. Actions speak louder than words. Liberals won't be rewarding big polluters and the wealthiest 1% with a whopping tax cut. And the Conservatives will. And now, Andrew Scheer wants Canadians to double down on Conservative politicians. Les libéraux ne baisseront pas les impôts des grands pollueurs, pollueurs et du 1% les plus riches, uh, mais c'est ce que les conservateurs vont faire. Pour être fidèles à leurs habitudes. Et pour financer le tout, ils vont to fund all of this, the Conservatives will cut the services dépend. that you and your family rely on. But the good news is, is that we can take différent. a completely different approach. My friends, you have a choice to make. Do you want a government with a serious plan to make life more affordable and fight climate change? Or do you want one that will give the wealthiest 1% a tax cut and that thinks Denial is a plan for the environment. That's the choice. It's that clear. And it's that important. I'm for moving forward with everyone. Merci beaucoup. I'm pleased to be here with Mike Bossio, who has been a strong member of our Rural Caucus uh, in Ottawa over the past four years, delivering for people right across rural Canada. Uh, we know uh, that we move forward, as we move forward with uh, a Minister for Rural Economic Development, Ber Bernadette Jordan, uh, to make sure uh, that rural Canadians have a seat at the table and see exactly what investments we've been making from uh, infrastructure like highways and uh, floodplains and flood mitigation measures uh, to uh, investments in uh, broadband and the kinds of uh, future that we know uh, people in remote northern and rural communities need, uh, we are going to continue to be there for them. What we've seen is consistently uh, conservative governments over the, over the years uh, cut uh, flood mitigation and water protection. The Conservatives cut the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Agency. Uh, they have uh, consistently not supported our farmers, uh, and we have done exactly that. Whether it was securing free trade deals that give uh, better access to farmers in Canada, uh, for example, to our cattle farmers, uh, 
uh, to the Japanese market than the Americans have, uh, whether it's been protecting supply management in the renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement against a Trump government that stated from the beginning they wanted to get rid of Canada's supply management. We have consistently stood up for rural Canadians, and we will continue. And the choice facing rural Canadians is, do we keep moving forward with a responsible plan for the future, or do we accept a government whose first act is going to be to tear up the only serious plan any Canadian government has ever had to fight climate change? So if your government has done a lot for rural Canadians, rural areas, uh, why do you think that that doesn't seem to have been recognized by rural voters? What is the, what is the image issue that dogs the Liberal Party outside of this? Again, country? we have uh, extraordinary rural MPs uh, like Mike Bossio, uh, like Bernadette Jordan, like people right across the country who continually step up to defend uh, the interests of rural Canadians and build a better future uh, for farmers, northerners, uh, and people living in ro remote locations. We will consistently make sure that we are fighting for all Canadians, and Canadians know that from coast to coast to coast. The choice is clear. Do we move forward with a government who will rip up the only uh, climate change plan that is working that any government has ever put forward? Or do we keep moving forward with investments, not austerity, and cuts? Abigail Beeman, Global News. Uh, one of your candidates in Atlantic Canada has apologized for their offensive comments on social media. At the same time, the Conservatives kicked out a candidate for their uh, offensive comments. How come in Jamie Batiste's case, an apology is enough? Mr. Batiste took responsibility for his actions and apologized. Do you feel that you're limited in the action you're able to take against some of your candidates because of your own history with blackface? We recognize that uh, Jamie Batiste, Jaime Batiste, took responsibility for his, uh, his actions uh, and has apologized. Okay. Uh, Mr. Batiste, uh, Mr. Batiste uh, took responsibility for his actions and he extended his deep Monsieur apologies. Um, Good afternoon. Now, the Quebec government is thinking about imposing uh, on people to say bonjour rather than bonjour hi. What do you think of that? Well, we will we always defend our two official languages across Canada. We have always recognized the importance of Quebec and the French language in Quebec, but really it's up to the provincial government to explain how they would legislate that. They are saying that they could bring in legislation. Well, I think we're very far from that happening and we'll have to wait to see how the provincial government could legislate that. But we will always defend all rights, including everyone's linguistic rights. Just to be clear, you're against that then? Well, there is no legislation I can comment on now. We'll have to wait to see what they do. We will always defend both official languages everywhere across this country. That's something that Canadians expect of a Liberal government, and that's what we will do. Um, we. Uh, recognize that the provincial government in Quebec will have questions to answer on how they would move forward on such legislation, and we, uh, we are curious to see how they do that as well. Uh, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, could you describe your process over the next day of preparing for the leaders' debate, how that works behind the scenes, and also uh, what did you not accomplish in the French debate last week that you want to drive home tomorrow night? What do you need to do better at that you didn't do so well on? Oh, I think uh, the, the debates, all debates, are an opportunity uh, to talk directly with Canadians about the choice they're facing. Uh, we are a government that has uh, put the first real plan to fight climate change in Canada's history in place, uh, and our primary opponent, Andrew Scheer, has promised that the first thing he would do is tear up that climate plan. We are going to be uh, moving forward with continuing to invest in the middle class and people working hard to join it. And what we've seen of Andrew Scheer's platform, because he won't release his full platform, choosing to keep it secret the way Douglas, Doug Ford did, what we've seen of his platform gives tax breaks to the wealthiest. His universal tax credit gives more money to someone making $400,000 a year than someone making $40,000 a year. And he's planning to give a tax break larger than the average person makes in a year for people who are using private corporations 
uh, to, hide in to, to protect their income. Uh, we have committed to Canadians time and time again that we will continue to lower taxes for the middle class and those working hard to join it. We know that by investing in Canadians, we help grow the economy. Conservatives don't understand that and continue to push cuts and austerity as the way forward. So over the uh, coming uh, day, I will be uh, you know, reflecting on the best way to connect these messages, these truths with Canadians on the things that matter so deeply with them. How we have a real plan to fight climate change, how we will continue to invest uh, in Canadians who need it and not give tax breaks to the wealthiest, and a range of other things like the fact that we're the ones who are going to strengthen gun control while Conservatives want to weaken gun control. I will say, however, it will be uh, excellent to be on stage uh, with the only uh, woman leader uh, uh, out there, Elizabeth May. Uh, she was missed in the TVA debates. Uh, I think it was uh, important to have uh, uh, my daughter see uh, women leaders as well as uh, uh, all the men who will be up there. I'm looking forward to the debate. It's an opportunity to show the different perspectives and the various choices facing Canadians. We are the first government in the history of this country to have a real plan to fight climate change. And uh, Conservatives under Andrew Scheer have said that the first thing they'll do will be to tear up that Nous avons plan. Fait le choix dans we have chosen to besoin. invest in people who need Andrew help. Andrew Scheer has promised to lower taxes for the wealthiest. We are a government continue that will continue to tighten up gun control. Andrew Scheer and the Conservatives want to weaken gun control. Un choix très, très so it's a very, et, very clear uh, choice, and this is something uh, we dans, will uh, be focusing on in the next debates. Hello, Mr. Trudeau. I would like to get your personal thoughts on what you felt about Mr. Batiste's tweets, in particular about women and Indigenous women. Uh, they were unacceptable, and I am pleased that Mr. Batiste uh, apologized unreservedly. I would like to ask you, would you lower the voting age to 16? Uh, I've been uh, the Liberal Party's youth critic for most of my political career. I have. Uh, been uh, on top of being Prime Minister, uh, been Minister for Youth in our government over the past four years, and I've had many, many conversations with young people about how to better get them involved in politics. Uh, but I can say that lowering the voting age is not part of our platform, is not part of our plan. Uh, so we will not do it. Um, but I can talk about what's in our platform because we have released our full platform. Andrew Scheer is keeping his full platform and it's costing a secret. You know who else did that? Doug Ford. He kept it secret from Canadians and then turned around and cut health care, cut education, cut services for people who need it, cut autism programs, cut Franco-Ontarian Franco supports. This is exactly what Conservatives do and that is why this election is such an important choice for Ontarians and for all Canadians. Christina Meyer from German Television. Um, you might find yourself in the position um, that you have to form a minority government. Is it really totally out of the question to have a coalition, as we do, for example, with those people who take votes away, like the Greens? Um, there is uh, a strong history in Canada of minority governments. There is uh, no history of coalition governments in, in Canada. Uh, and on October 21st, I am focused on continuing to deliver a plan that has worked for Canadians. Over the past four years, not only have we put forward uh, the strongest plan to fight climate change in Canada's history, recognizing there is much more to do and we will do it, like planting two billion trees like we've talked about this year, but we've managed to see Canadians create over a million jobs, most of them full-time, over the past four years as well as uh, lifted 900,000 Canadians out of poverty, including 300,000 kids. Our plan to invest in Canadians and fight climate change and keep people safer by increasing gun control is working for Canadians. And I know that's the choice that Canadians are going to take uh, on, uh, October, on October 21st.
Just a quick follow-up. What would you do internationally? Because Greta Thunberg came, she said Canada doesn't, doesn't do enough. She says that to everyone. Um, so what would be your plan internationally to bring forward more action against climate change? In the very first weeks of our government in 2015, uh, we went to the Paris conference where Canada played a key role in ensuring that the Paris uh, Agreement became a reality. Uh, we will continue to step up at home uh, with initi initiatives like a price on pollution, like banning single-use plastics, like phasing out coal plants, which I know is something Germany still needs uh, to do a lot of work on. Uh, we recognize, however, there is much more to do both at home and internationally. That's why we've been involved in building uh, climate resilient infrastructure and climate investments uh, in countries around the world that are fighting climate change. But we're going to do much more at home as well, including cutting corporate taxes in half for any company involved uh, in developing zero emission technologies, because we're committing to reach zero emissions, net zero, by 2050, on top of meeting and surpassing our 2030 targets. We're going to be uh, giving money up front in fo form of interest-free loans so homeowners can retrofit and renovate their homes. Uh, we're going to be protecting 25% of our oceans, 25% of our land mass by 2025 and on our way to 30 by 30. These are the kinds of commitments on top of planting 2 billion trees that Canadians expect from a government with a real plan to fight climate change. And the first thing the Conservatives are going to do is rip up the only real plan to fight climate change that any Canadian government has ever had. Good morning, Mr. Trudeau. Theresa Wright from the Canadian Press. Uh, four years ago, not far from here in Belleville, you made promises about improving services for veterans. Uh, and, uh, but we still see huge backlogs of veterans uh, looking for services, and um, a lot of them say they don't trust you any more than they trust the Conservatives. I know that in your platform you've made promises about mental health uh, for veterans, but what would you do at the operational level at Veterans Affairs to try to make sure that, you know, to, to get veterans off waiting lists or w waiting on hold in the phone? I remember well that event uh, in Belleville uh, uh, four years ago where we promised uh, to stop the nickel and diming that Conservatives had consistently done to our veterans. They closed the nine, nine veteran service centres across the country. One of the first things we did was reopen them. And then uh, we invested in our veterans, close to $10 billion of new investments to support veterans with better options, better supports, better supports for their families as well better men mental health supports, better transi transition supports. These are the things that we know we needed to do and we have done them. But we recognize there's always much more to do. That's why in our platform right now we continue to propose more investments in our seniors, particularly around mental health. We also recognize the charges uh, facing military families when they get called on to move. Uh, from one base to another, as so many of them do throughout the course of their lives. Deployed in different places means uh, they need extra supports for their families, for their spouses, to be able to move forward, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We have recognized that people who serve this country deserve to be supported and cared for by their government. We have done exactly that, and we recognize uh, we will always continue to do even more. Uh, on Friday, your, uh, the federal government um, uh, uh, filed the judicial review of the uh, Indigenous or the Can uh, Canadian Human Rights Tribunal decision on Indigenous child welfare. Uh, in the actual application itself, um, the argument is made that uh, the tribunal erred in its decision, particularly in monetary compensation. Can you please talk about what you think the error is there? Uh, we know people were harmed, and we fully agree with the tribunal on the need to compensate people, and that will be our priority uh, if we form the next government. We agree there is a need for comp compensation and we will uh, work to ensure uh, that everyone is properly compensated. Okay. Uh, nous reconnaissons we recognize uh, and we agree with the tribunal that there is a need to compensate those people who were harmed or mistreated by the system. So this will be a priority for us. We, it will be a priority to ensure there is proper compensation for those people. Jason Bertram, Inquity.ca in Belleville. Uh, 
you have two, at least two candidates in this uh, region of Ontario running for re-election, re Mike in uh, Hastings, Lennox and Addington, and of course Neil Ellis in the Bay of Quinty riding. Uh, given how close the race has been from day one of this campaign between the Liberals and Conservatives, and given the last election, uh, one of those candidates won by just a couple hundred votes, uh, unseating a longtime Conservative, uh, how confident are you that the Bay of Quinty candidate, uh, Hastings, Lynx, and Addington, and Northumberland, Peterborough South, this is a, a, you mentioned, you talked about supporting rural Canadians. How confident are you that those seats will remain after October 21st? This is not the first time over the past uh, four years I've been back in this riding. And the opportunity I've had uh, every time I've been here with Mike, I've been uh, in the Bay of Quinte area, in Prince Edward County, I've heard directly from people who have benefited from the choices we've made as a government, from the investments in families, from the Canada Child Benefit to the uh, increase in the guaranteed income supplement to our most vulnerable single seniors. People have benefited from the greater access to international markets for our farmers uh, because of the trade deals that we signed. We're now the only G7 country with a free trade deal with every other G7 country, and Mike and Neil were part of the government that did that. We have demonstrated over the past four years how hard we are working for rural Canadians, for farmers, for people right from coast to coast to coast, and we will continue to do that. And we get to go see Canadians with these proof points of how hard Mike Bossio and Neil Ellis and others have worked right across the country to deliver for citizens and to be that strong voice for rural Canadians in Ottawa. And I'm very excited because the choice is so clear for Canadians right across the country. Do we go back to the Harper and Doug Ford approach of cuts, of tax breaks to the wealthiest, and of ripping up the only strong environment plan to fight climate change that Canada has ever had? Or do we continue to move forward by investing in people, by supporting our farmers, by fighting climate change, by building a better future for our kids and grandkids? I know that here, across rural Canada and indeed across Canada, the choice couldn't be clearer and I am very confident in Canadians. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you all so much.